Wow, that's... I feel inspired. Fantastic. Well, really great, great. And thanks to the organizer, Melody, uh, Sarah, and to invite me as well to give me that platform. And I've just prepared a few images. Um, thinking about passive systems and thinking back to the 21st century, uh, sorry, 20th century early time when modernism went out into the, uh, the late part of the colonial uh, era into, into India, into Africa, into the Middle East, and they had no air conditioning. So these are maybe some examples we want to look at. So I want to look at uh, sustainability as the opportunity for tectonic articulation, in particular with respect to uh, shading and brisolet systems. I think they give a lot of depth and interest, light and shadow, and also interior interest and character and, uh, to, to these projects. Um, yeah, this is run. This keeps running. So some of these are, this idea of depth of facade is beautiful. And, and um, we've I'm paired this up with some um, of our works. We've been on to that, of course, but for many, many years. What, of course, is beautiful about Brisole systems is that you get the steps that layeredness that you, is responsive to different perspectives and point of view, but then we can be more optimized and adaptive uh, where, the, where we use the different Brisole system on the building as they migrate around the building and adapt to the different sun directions with different depths and directions and make it uh, transform vertical to horizontal, etc. And this wasn't always 100% systematic, but um, I'm just juxtaposing here the way, the way we've been doing this and the way I think this, this is um, uh, the different techniques of asymmetrizing that and, and adapting it. And also the way these facades then respond to the vista that they keep, they close down and open up depending on which direction you look at it. We also look at obviously uh, horizontal surfaces and roofs and the way we bring light in flood, as Sarah said, flood the building with light and at the same time cut out the direct sunlight, look back at the, at the clouds, etc and also allow some, some kinetic elements within that and to make it even more adjusted, like we have it in, in Maxio, why we envision it here. And also, I think I do like what Ken said, that we can start uh, so using these surfaces, which now expose themselves directly, take the sun and, and fill them with, uh, you know, print them with solar and voltaic cells, etc. So I think there's a very richness of, of articulation we can find, sometimes a bit willful, but also always interesting when you look at it from back from the inside. And these are some of these examples, for instance, of early uh, modernists in the 30s in Africa and these kind of screens and the way this inspired us. And we've been studying this of the, in Vienna and elsewhere. Uh, this is a project from the 20s as well. We looked at and then you, uh, this is uh, Unity by Le Corbusier. And we did this project in Budapest, I think, which was, uh, was quite, quite beautiful. And, uh, did this and gradually uh, transformed the depths of these cells and uh, layering cells within cells, etc., and then um, making that an, a, a, a facade which plays with light. When the light pours in from the inside, it's more rich, and it just op opens it up for much more lively, lively objects compared to flat surfaces, which I'm always high, quite critical of. So we looked at Istanbul and different parts, and. Also looking how urbanistically you can use the facade. So the facade to the public is much more deep relief and in the in private areas, um, more shallow. And so you, there's a phenomenology and the semiology at play and making the environment more legible because you can read the sun directions of the, um, of the facade even on an overcast day. And again, you can also guess where these projects are, if, you, if, you, if they'll be photographed, there's a kind of regionalism, critical regionalism in that. These are early studies uh, from the early parts of uh, where, we, where we're using sun exposure map and drive geometry directly to optimize and differentiate the, um, I think the, the codex is missing on this one. I have to kind of jump, this is animation. Okay, sorry about this. Um, yeah. Where we where we um, can use algorithms to to transform sun exposure maps into geometry tra transformations and optimize this way. But I just want to think it's just a thrill to 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 work with bristles and and facades and depths of facade etc. And variations so you can open up where you have an atrium behind and it also inf impacts and reflects the, the internal to the external with respect to lighting requirements etc. To make that happen I think is very 
very interesting. And if you look up a tower, it becomes very different. It look, look sideways and, and frontally. And also the idea of tensile elements, perhaps, like Egon Eiermann in the, in the, in the uh, 40s and 50s, and the way we tried to use that, for instance, in the Hamburg project. Um, and it was a bit timid. <laughs> And, and I, therefore, I'm showing this, this, this project by a German architect who did in Saudi Arabia, where we are visiting the building. The, uh, the, the central library has these wonderful sails. And I think this is probably very uh, low embodied carbon, the tensile structures. And uh, you can then maybe print photovoltaics on this, meshes of various kinds, and second layers. I think this is always makes, make, makes a project richer also from, uh, and of course, this is one of my favorite on the key landmark projects, okay, forget about embodied carbon on this one, but in terms of the low uh, running costs and the, the beautiful adaptation uh, integrating structure with Brissolet uh, um, blades, and what is very important for me is that the way it becomes a real landmark because you, it's so asymmetrized, so the different sides look so different, so you know where on which side of that landmark you are when you get lost in the city. But also, you know, there's a double functionality. Of course, once you have balconies, et cetera, they become shading elements. And this is another great project where you can see here that the way the parameter of sun and wind uh, impose themselves of totally different typology or ontologies nearly of the, 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 the occupied volumes as well as the shading screen, they re react to the same parameters and they're taking up as the modulating force, and therefore they become unified. Uh, these two parts of the project become unified through this being, impo being responding in a similar way to the same kind of parametric, uh, uh, sort of impacting uh, parameters of, of keeping the sun out and letting the wind flow through. So it's also one of the seminal projects, I think. Of course, we have also the problems of these big pochets and, and heavy substructures. So we're not, I'm still, of course, we have to be self-critical on many levels, but I think what is very important to me is that when you look at such projects, the physiognomy of and massing, but also the whole character shows itself being uniquely driven and uniquely careful, but then it's meaningfully driven by environmental parameters. And also you can sense, even though it's so 21st century, it's also regionally embedded because it lives in the same climates as the regional conditions. So learning from the vernaculars of this world is important in terms of passive system, but also including these, uh, the learning from the early 20th century, uh, modernism before um, um, air conditioning. And yeah, roof overhangs another thing we always love because it creates a wonderful relation with inside and outside, but, and it does a lot of work for comfort, for our exterior space, but also for shading. And so here we're learning also again from traditional features of large roof overhangs, and then playing also with, uh, you know, changing the physiognomy. If you have a relief, it reacts differently to different conditions of lighting and becomes other. But also, this is a phenomenology where you can show uh, the sensitivity to what I call observer parameters when, when the perspective keeps changing as you look up a building, look past a building, along its uh, tangentially or more frontally and that you can have embedded differentiations. So something which is homogenous, suddenly from a different perspective, looks differentiated, uh, circles become, become uh, squares, and squares become circles, or wave patterns. There's a, all of that is possible with depths of facade with relief, and we don't have that when we have flat facades. And that's what I think, of course, it's a little bit more expensive to do that kind of depth and relief, but then you can maybe get things back through the savings on energy and maybe even and I think it's a really nice idea to, to use all these surfaces and paint, paint them with photovoltaic, if you like. At the A, we're studying that at the moment as well, how, 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 how we can develop these different depths of facade and have different sun rotations showing up with very different degrees of extrusion, and that gives you an orientation in terms of global orientation in the city, which could otherwise be confusing. In a, in a large, complex city where you can get lost. And it's one of the articulatory tasks is orientation, communication, etc. So that's my contribution, and I think it's inspiring. <laughs>